Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for June 12th, 2024. Well, today's the day that we have been waiting for. The market has had heavy anticipation on this, and it is likely going to be uh, a pretty interesting day. I would expect some volatility. Um, even uh, the CNBC headline here says uh, Fed meeting and inflation report both hit Wednesday and the impact could be huge. So what we want to be watching for is considerable volatility that could occur today as a result of these reports. So that being said, when we take a look at what um, our charts and things uh, look like here this morning. Just remember, data can change everything instantly in the market. And it's not necessarily the data, it's how the market reacts to that data that could be so intense. We'll have to wait and see. So, first off, let's take a look, quick look at what happened overnight. Asian markets last night um, were mostly lower, um, but mixed. We had Shanghai just a little bit higher and South Korea a little bit higher. Everything else was moving lower. As a matter of fact, uh, the Nikkei falling um, 258 and um, Hong Kong falling 238, a full one point three one percent uh, drop that's that tech heavy sector um, over there in Hong Kong if we take a look at European markets European markets are putting on a brave face this morning trying to surge back higher ahead of the Fed decision perhaps they uh, feel like um, we have already priced in the potential um, uh, selling off the last couple of days. We'll have to wait and see if they're correct or not. But showing green across the board here in Europe, um, some modest gains, but uh, looking pretty good overall. And then if we take a look at U.S. futures, U.S. futures are also trying to put on a brave face, but very modestly this morning, trying to show a little bit of upside bounce here after well a couple of days of uncertainty in the more in the markets except for the nasdaq which just continues to pump to new highs on fewer and fewer stocks pushing it up if we take a look at um, oil this morning we've got oil moving just a little bit higher if we take a look at xle you can see xle has been moving in a downtrend here but we are trying to push just a tiny bit higher this morning oil up 91 cents at 78 81 a barrel brent is up 80 cents at 82 72 a barrel and it's been a while but we haven't seen natural gas moving lower ung maybe ran into some resistance up here this little topping pattern in here yesterday i sold some short strikes or covered calls against my ung just to hedge the position i would expect a little rest or consolidation could be on the way here at any time but watch that closely here in a natural gas if we take a look at um our precious metals we've got gold moving just a little bit higher here this morning gold's pushing up just a tiny little bit silver's up a tiny little bit and copper um, well basically flat platinum and palladium are still lower this morning of course these could have some major impacts in here based on what happens in um, the market today and how we start pricing money and we'll talk about that in just a second cryptos this morning are trying to make a bounce back they've had a little bit of um, a tough go here the last few days just i think kind of worried about where the dollar is going to go but right now bitcoin is up 654 dollars um, a coin and green pretty much across the board there again trying to put on a little bit of a brave face here this morning heading into these data points let's uh take a look at our bonds this morning now our bonds are holding in pretty flat uh this morning they did pull back yesterday afternoon um but 
um, holding pretty steady here this morning at 4.84% on the two year, the tens at 4.40% and the 30 year at 4.53%. So keep an eye on the, those. Um, um, obviously that inversion is still there and this could be the culprit today if we start seeing some big fluctuations in these bond rates and currencies we could see lots of movement um, in that area of the market that would have effects on cryptos, it would have effects on precious metals, it would have effects on any commodity. Prices uh, could be up or down substantially based on the data that we get today and how the market reacts uh, to that data. So how about we settle in, let's buckle up, and let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. And remember, it's really going to be handed to us today. Um, CPI comes out prior before the market opens, so expect considerable volatility, expect possibility of whipsaws, um, expect uh, pops and drops and, and vice versa. Um, or we might drop and then rebound um, and, and whip that price action substantially. Um, we are set up for that potential of some big point moves depending on how that data comes in and um, we should be prepared for that uh, this morning. So looking at this chart, you can see yesterday we pushed down here in the diamonds. Bears tried to push us down through. We had a really sharp sell-off there initially. And then um, all day long kind of grinding this back up um, yesterday. And you can see if the bulls can continue to find inspiration in here. First off, we need to see if we can break through that little area in the chart right there. If we can, then I would be looking for this resistance up in here in the chart. And these are some, could be some really big point swings here today. And if we can break through there, you can see right on up. And then of course, beyond that point, we're starting to look for a retest of the all time highs here in the diamonds. Unfortunately, we have this other situation going on as well, where we have created this lower high here in the chart. And if the bears were to find inspiration today, well, we can see breaking down below this area of price support right in here could start sending us quickly lower into a retest of this area of the chart. Beyond that point, we really start to run into some pressure and pain, uh, possibly filling a gap and then coming on down into these levels of the chart. Um, would be those next areas. Now, I doubt that we do that all at once or all in one day, but you never know. This has been a very emotional market, so watch carefully here if we get disappointed um, by the data. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY showing uber confidence here, continuing to move up. This was if it weren't for um, uh, Microsoft and Apple, this would have looked much different yesterday. If you look at the heat map of the of the S&P 500, there was very few stocks that were in the green um, in the S&P 500 yesterday. But um, those that big move in Apple did the majority of this move um, in the SPY. So blue skies above. Um, new record highs. We're trying to put in new record highs here be uh, before the open. So watch that carefully. It would be on the downside that we have some data here that we can look at. A little bit of price support right through there if the bears were to come into play. If they uh, push on beyond that, you can see we've got a push down in here. And um, then we'd be worried about our trend 
here. Breaking below that's where a little bit of fear would come into the market. We could start looking at levels as we start pushing on down in this chart. So watch that carefully. Upside blue sky above in the um, SPY. If we take a look at um, our QQQ, same situation. Blue sky above no resistance up there in the chart we continue to um, stay tremendously bullish with a very few big tech giants pushing the index higher i, I don't think we have ever seen um, the qqqs so out of balance with such a small number of stocks controlling the entire index now that can be a great thing as long as everything goes really well with those companies but if they were happen were to happen to stumble in some way shape or form then just be prepared for um, an outside move to the downside um, because um, if they control the index that strongly um, when they sell off just be prepared for what that could um, create. Now, that being said, there's nothing in this chart that suggests selling right now. It's all bulls all the time in the QQQ, pushing those tech giants higher. And um, if the bears were to find some reason to be inspired here today to sell, you can see we've got a price support right in here that we would be looking at first to test that area. Failing through that, we would probably be coming back in here into this price support and we'd be looking possibly at this trend in here. Breaking down below that trend is where some worry would come into the market and we could really see some acceleration in selling. And I think what we would probably see is those CTA firms, which are um, very, very long. The CTAs are... Um, it's been quite the conversation. They are so long, the market, if we start to see um, any kind of reversal here, expect those CTAs to start selling uh, pretty heavily. So watch that carefully here in the queues. Now, if we take a look at our IWM, IWM also showing us that downtrend. And this is a confirmed downtrend because we have... Uh, made new lows so not only have we made lower highs we've made lower lows here in the chart and although we rallied up yesterday we want to notice that if the bulls uh, find that inspiration today we have this resistance here in the chart that we'll have to deal with and certainly the data today could easily push us right up through there with a big pop and if we push up through here then you can see uh, the congestion that we've got in here and then the next likely resistance area would be right up here in the chart beyond this point if we break through here well we can see that we could push right up here into this downtrend here in the chart on IWM and then beyond that point we're back up here testing this major resistance area of um, 21 and 22 so watch that carefully here in the Russell if the bears were to find inspiration today well you can see the first place I'd be looking um, at here is a retest of these lows last couple of days we'll be watching that um, a drop down through there would probably probably bring us um, down into these lower prints as you can see we've got some support levels down across here that we would be looking to test we start breaking this trend line in here and that really is a trend line it is not a um, a straight flat line if we were to break down below there we're probably going to start making some um, some moves in here that would distress the market a little bit breaking down below here would be starting to look at testing these lows that we've um, done earlier this year and be threatening to maybe take that out so watch that carefully here in the Russell today if we take a look at our VIX boy our VIX no fear we started yesterday with that um, hard sell-off uh, particularly in the Dow and we had that fear come in, but then as those tech, and, and again, it was just such a very small, two, three, four um, tech stocks that really did the lifting um, yesterday in the market. 
Um, and, and they're across the Dow, the SPY, and the QQQ. Microsoft and Apple are in the Dow. So um, they did the majority of the work yesterday, and you can see um, we ended up saying, no, we've got no fear at all here in the market. And I got to tell you, that that is smacking some pretty heavy complacency here. Now, the market may be exactly right, but if we were to stumble, just be prepared for some pain um, on this market. It could come quick if we were to stumble. I'm not suggesting we will, but watch carefully for that possibility. We're holding a little bit of a higher low, but no particular worries there. We continue to hold this downtrend here, so we're wedging in this pattern. Watch carefully how we react to the data today. And then if we take a look at our T20s, our T2122 gives us a clearer picture of what's happening in the market. While we um, made new record highs in the SPY and the QQQ, you want to notice that we still had more more stock selling than we had going up and I know that that just seems so strange that we can have just a few a handful of companies lift the indexes um, it's it's a new uh, metric in the market that is kind of interesting that we can dominate with these massive uh, companies out there dominate the indexes and keep them looking bullish when the majority of stocks are pulling back but our t2122 you can see a um, couple of times during the day yesterday we dipped down in here into this bullish reversal zone on T2122. So watch that carefully. We still have space here to the downside if the bears find that inspiration in the data today. But we have opened up a massive, a huge upside opportunity if the bulls find inspiration in that data today. So once again, I would suggest to be watching for some pretty big point moves in um, T2122 or in the indexes based on the data that we get today. If we take a look at um, T2107, T2107 also continues to show us our problem here in the market. The percentage of the stocks above the 200 day moving average continued to fall yesterday, despite well, the last two days, despite the fact that we get this impression that everything is super, super bullish in the market. Notice we've got about 51 and three quarter percent of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average. So remember, 200 day moving average. So we've got just a touch more than half the stocks that are just holding above their 200 day moving average. That means we got about half the stocks that have fallen below our 200 day moving average. Not exactly a bullish picture for the market. And if we take a look at T2108, T2108, the percentage of stocks holding above their 40-day moving average. And by the way, I get asked this question, um, why did they pick 40? I don't know. If it were me, it'd be a 50-day um, average in here, but they picked a 40-day. The percentage of stocks holding above the 40-day continuing to fall um, the last couple of days despite those indexes moving higher in the SPY and the QQQ. So more stocks selling then going up and as you can see here we're only looking at about 36 percent of the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average not exactly a great bullish picture here for the market despite the fact that those tech stocks are continuing to hold those indexes higher so watch that carefully our t2101 we have had a real lack of breadth here um, yesterday was pretty much flat it had started up with that big selling yesterday but as they recovered covered it um, to the back to the upside it kind of flattened out our breadth here on the day so uh, today I would expect some kind of substantial move here in our breadth and depending on how we react to the market today so watch carefully here breadth has been weakening and weakening and weakening and remember we're slipping into the blackout periods here um, for companies, um, corporate buybacks will have to diminish um, as they go into their blackout period. 
and we could continue to see that breadth be a little bit on the weak side because so much of the volume of the market right now is in the big tech corporate buybacks um, and, and uh, overall buybacks right now trying to complete those before they go into their blackout period. So watch that carefully. Let's take a look at um, some um, stocks that could be, oh wait, we better take a really quick look at our economic calendar today. Um, it's what we've been talking about um, all morning. And our economic calendar is going to be very critical for the day. I didn't have it set up here, so give me just a second. There we go. If we take a look, we've got a CPI. And CPI numbers, they're expecting the month over month um, CPI to go up by 0.1%, uh, looking at the CPI year over year to hold flat at 3.4. Now, um, X Food and Energy, they're looking that to hold flat at 0.3, and they're looking at um, a decline of one tenth in the year over year on X Food and Energy. And this is probably what the market is going to key on, this number here. So we'll wanna watch these pretty closely. Remember, if um, these were to move higher, that is something that the market's not going to like. It's going to tell the Fed that they can't lower rates if we continue to see those numbers up. We need to see these numbers dropping. So anything below these expectations, if these numbers come down below those expectations, look for the market to celebrate. Um, for that. So watch these pretty closely. Could be a big important um, um, move coming um, right after these um, numbers are released. And then once we get through that, we're going to have, remember we got mortgage applications here this morning as well. We're going to get a petroleum status. Those will largely be ignored, I think, because as soon as we get past this number and the reaction on that, everybody's going to be thinking what happens here. We've got the FOMC announcement. I don't think anyone is expecting the Fed to do anything with the rates. They're probably going to hold them flat. The concern will be here in the press conference um, whether or not they are um, sounding hawkish, if they're sounding dovish. That's going to be the interesting thing. And of course, that potential dot plot, whichever one, I think there's dot plots, just a guess. But um, that idea that they came out with a couple of months ago that there could be three rate cuts this year, the market would react probably negatively if they started reducing those uh, potential rate cuts or even eliminate um, those potential rate cuts this year. And there's a lot of folks believing that we'll have no rate cuts until maybe 2025. So kind of keep that in mind. We could see some heavy reaction in the market um, on that Fed press conference um, uh, data today. So watch carefully. Uh, past that, we're going to jump right into those problematic jobless claims that we've been having staying very hot. And of course, the PPA uh, number will want to be watching that closely as well. So another inflation data point. Past that, we've, we're going to have uh, Fed members coming out of their blackout period. They're going to start talking again. So start looking for um, a few Fed speakers here at the end of the week, and I would expect a whole bunch of them next week. So watch carefully there. We've got a 30-year bond auction and a Fed balance sheet as well. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar here for today. And our earnings calendar, very light. Um, nothing um, in the pre-market here. No early notables here to be worried about at all. This afternoon, we do have a couple. And our most notable is going to be Broadcom, um, AVGO. Keep an eye on that. This has been tearing it up. Uh, of course, a big supplier to Apple and um, Apple um, uh, pushing up here so strongly yesterday. We've had a lot of anticipation here on Broadcom. So watch that. Blue Sky High is here on this. Watch that report um, the, this afternoon. We're going to hear from Dave & Busters this afternoon. We're going to get a report from OXM. And 
CURV will also be later today. So watch these. Those will be your notables for this afternoon. Let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos. If you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, please do me that favor. Click that thumbs up button. Leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I truly, truly truly appreciate it. Now, let's talk just a little bit about how these numbers can affect the market today. First off, we have talked about bonds and bond yields. Bonds are basically the cost of money. And what we have been seeing here lately, I'm going to use UUP as an example of the, of the US dollar. What we've seen here the last few days, as those bond yields have been going up, we've been seeing the cost of the dollar going up, the, the price of the dollar going higher. Now you can see we came up here, we tested this area of resistance and we're pulling back at the moment. But if we were to have any kind of hint that inflation is not cooling here today, you would expect bond yields to rise. And when bond yields rise, the cost of the dollar goes up. And they have this relationship um, that is really important to understand, particularly on a day like today where we're thinking about um, an FOMC decision, what these rates might be. Um, if the uh, Fed were to sound a bit on the hawkish side, we could also see those bond yields going higher, pricing the dollar higher. Now, when the dollar goes up, we will typically see things like, well, take a look at gold, the way gold has been handling the strengthening dollar. As the dollar strengthens, we tend to weaken up in gold and silver. We tend to weaken up in any commodity price because if you think about it carefully, um, as the dollar strengthens, it takes fewer dollars to buy the same amount of product in those commodities. If the dollar were to weaken, if the dollar weakens, it takes more dollars to buy the same product. And so we will tend to see things like gold, silver, oil, all of those commodity prices go up. So we have that inverse relationship here with the dollar and um, and these uh, bond yields that could push us around pretty dramatically today. So watch these numbers closely. We could see some major fluctuations in commodity prices here as well with um, um, with these numbers coming out today. Now, going on beyond that point, let's take a look at a few of these stocks that um, have been looking um, really, really good and continuing to hold up quite well um, overall in the market. Um, first off, um, all of a sudden I'm having a, a brain freeze here, but um, as you guys know, um, I have been talking about 3M and 3M is continuing to look good and it is one of the stocks um, that continued to move higher yesterday. Keep an eye on this. Now I know it's an old boring company. It doesn't have anything to do with AI. Um, but 3M looking very strong here, looking good. And um, with this big, strong dividend payment, it may be that little bit of search for safety. Now, of course, this could fluctuate a bunch with the data today. Watch that carefully, because if we get data that supports that we continue to just chase these techs higher, then um, it'll, it'll deprive money from 3M. Um, if, on the other hand, we find that we've got a problem going on here and we start to see those techs selling off, watch for folks reach out for a little bit of safety in some of these old boring companies um, here in the market. So take a look at 3M, take a look at Altria, um, looking pretty good in here, showing signs of strength, um, holding up uh, very, very well um, overall. Take a look at Philip Morris 
hanging in there, bullish patterns, bullish trends, looking very, very good. Um, take a look at Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble holding in here nice and strong. Uh, again, consumer defensive type stocks, things like that, things that we're going to need. Now, I would be a little bit worried a little bit more about retail. If retail starts to um, falter here, be careful. But Walmart still holding into a very strong bullish pattern right now. So if we get a big surge today, look for that opportunity to maybe catch Walmart and another stretch out here to a record high. You could take a look at Target. Target's going the other direction. So if we had that little bit of a of a stumble in the market, Target is all set up for a potential short to the downside here. Keep a close eye on that. Um, let's take a look at our financials. Now our financials are running into some trouble here. And this is another place that we'll, we could potentially see some big impacts here today. We know that our regional banks are having some problems. As a matter of fact, we had Moody's suggesting that there are several banks that are running into major trouble. And we had another report yesterday suggesting there's probably more to come on that because of that commercial real estate problem. Now, with our banks right now, our banks are kind of starving for some capital and they're um, in a little bit of a hurt locker here if we continue to see um, um, inflation going higher if the CPI doesn't reduce that's going to put additional pressure on these financials so we've got an XLF this is a nice potential shorting pattern take a look at Citibank we're seeing the impacts here ahead of this and some worry and concern on these major banks heading into these numbers. So keep a close eye on those financials. Could be a good place to find some shorting opportunities if that data today were to come in showing that we've got more work to do on inflation, putting some hardship on the banks. And then of course, um, if we take a look at our regional banks, that's where the real problem is in um, that commercial real estate problem but you can see our regional banks pushing back down if we take a look at our moving averages we have actually dropped below our 200 day moving average and so showing some failure here on the kre etf so watch that carefully here for the day so with that everyone that's about all i'm going to cover today because everything is really going to key in on how we react to these data points today anything may be possible so just be prepared for some volatility hopefully you took heed of that coming in monday and tuesday on the morning prepped protecting yourself i actually made some moves yesterday taking some profits off on good looking charts took profits off and then hedged other trades for the possibility of volatility today hopefully you've done the same you're in a position where you can handle um, these potential moves that could um, occur today and then remembering we're not we're not out of the woods um, after the end of today because we got more inflation numbers coming tomorrow but it will be likely much more subdued on um, Thursday than we will experience today so um, I want to wish you all a fantastic day be careful be safe and I'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning Wishing you all the very, very best.